Hello everybody, I would like to introduce my classmates Carla Hernandez, Catalina Herrera, Mitzi Salazar and I, Constanzi Nostrosa. In this lesson, we'll look over some ideas which explain how languages could disappear through time. Also, how some languages have more influences in society than others, which have less symbolic power and how this affects especially indigenous languages like Mapuzungun. Chilean people, in terms of cultural appreciation, tend to favor foreign culture instead of their own. As a clear example of this, the teaching of Aboriginal languages is displaced by the teaching of foreign languages such as English or French, in the Chilean education curricula. This phenomenon is possible due to the fact that Aboriginal languages and ethnic culture are not deemed economically convenient for the country, which has a flagrant neoliberal educational system. One must not look any further than when listening to some common phrases among Chilean people related to this topic, such as learn English because that language opens the doors of the world for you, exalting one foreign language because it is globally recognized as the universal language, and with the most utility in the labor and educational field is what currently keeps English in the prominent place that it holds in the educational curricula. Furthermore, it should be taken into consideration that Aboriginal languages do not have the necessary economic capital to be imposed as the dominant language of any region. This turns particularly interesting when recalling the fact that in some regions of the country the population of students whose mother tongue is not Spanish far exceed those who have this language as predominant. Not to mention how difficult it is for these students to adapt to the Spanish-dominated educational system of this country. According to the Educación 2020 article, those who speak Spanish are seven times more likely to develop in reading than those who speak Aboriginal languages. A possible explanation for this could be due to the fact that Chilean education is not designed with an intercultural approach that could benefit from the interaction between those who speak Spanish as their first language and those whose main tongue belongs to ethnic groups. This creates an educational and cultural gap that most significantly affects students who are not able to access the same educational foundations as their classmates. This gap leads to the marginalization of those who share different cultures and the possible extinction of said cultures along with their respective language as a result of them trying to adapt to the predominant characteristics of an environment. To illustrate this situation, it's necessary to consider some ideas of the French sociologist Pierre Bourdieu. Bourdieu considers language to be a cultural product or commodity that contains an associated value in society. Bourdieu adds that language as a commodity has the ability to influence and these influences are determined by the language itself meaning those who speak said language and how they use that type of language. As a result, a, a language with more influence or power becomes a, a value that promotes legitimization and domination over social relationships, similar to that of economic capital. Those who have accumulated vast economic capital 
are those who have the most influence in our society. In that respect, it's possible to affirm that there are some languages that will more influence than others, as in the case of English, in contrast with other languages which will less influence like indigenous languages. In Chile, there is a language called Mabusungun, which is spoken by one of the most important indigenous groups of the country, the Maputes. Mapusungun, which is roughly translated as the language of the universe or the language of the earth, is still widely spoken by the Mapuche people. However, due to the decrease in number of Mapuche population and general disinterest in indigenous cultures, not only by the Chilean government, but also by Spanish-speaking Chileans, the language is now on the brink of extinction. In Chile, only 10% of the Mapuche population speak Mapusungun, and another 10% of the population can understand it, Why the rest haven't any notion about the language. Well, another aspect related to the decline in the widespread use of Mapudungun among the Mapuche population and its recognition among Chileans is the symbolic violence badly associated with its use. This violence has an undoubtedly inadvertently affected its historical course of the history of the Mapuche people. In the past, it was a reality that Mapuche children were forced to enter to the Chilean educational system and they were severely punished for using their mother tongue within the school context. And not only because of the prohibition of using the Mapudungun within a school, but also through the ridicule that became from the ignorance of Chilean society of that time. Consequently, the Mapuche children of several generations past who grew up and eventually became parents, avoid teaching their children Mapunungun in order to protect them from this dark reality. They thought that by avoiding the use of Mapunungun, their children were suffer less. This is according to Mei Yang in 2019. To better illustrate this situation, it is necessary to know the concept of symbolic violence, and it can be understood according to Preverdo as a symbolic violence is violence exercised with tacit complicity between its victims and its agents to the extent that both remain unconscious of submitting or exercising. Uh, this is as, uh, according to Bourdieu, as mentioned before, in 1984. This type of violence is not as physical as one might er erroneously suppose. In fact, symbolic violence is not perceived as such, and it is learned by repeating patterns of behavior. Therefore, this behavior it's important to understand why a language may stop being spoken by the indigenous member who gave birth to it. According to a 2012 public study carried out of Institute of Research in Social Studies of the Diego Portales University of Chile, the majority of Chilean society, that means the 87.3% think that in Chile there is a great discrimination towards certain groups. Among the groups that receive the most discrimination are homosexual, people with dark complexion, and the Mapuche population. This is according a site in Fairfield in 2015. As it has been pointed out, 
Languages carry many aspects of symbolic power within them. When they're sending them, some languages have more influence than others, and how power plays an important role in the use of a language in a society is a relevant aspect in the study of how language influences society. In that respect, languages that possess less economic capital have less influence over society, such as the case of indigenous languages. This situation contributes to the progressive loss and eventual extinction of a language. Therefore, it is a fundamental that the Chilean government implements new bilingual strategies among the entire population, including Mapuche and not Mapuche people, to preserve Mapurungun. The importance of this issue resides in the fact that a language is a tool that helps to understand the cosmovision and history of a culture especially if said language holds a millenaria history like Mapudungun does. In the rule of social activism that some art should be included in the work of teachers, there is a duty of raising awareness and sharing the knowledge that is acquired within communities. This knowledge and language builds realities and in turn destroy others. As for those who expect to be teachers in the area of English or other languages. What should be thought should be the harmony between all the languages that belong to a community and students, always respecting the cultures and symbolism they represent. Mapudungun is an example of this problematized reality. Future teachers should provide the opportunity to generate instance of reflection in the face of the linguistic diversity that society faces. This comes from the recent need of being able to contribute positively to the preservation of languages that the Chilean territory has built. Understanding in turn that despite sharing a common history, Mapuche people should not be and not Crowling decides to be considered as Chilean as a result of them being oppressed and neglected throughout history. Chileans must be fully aware that their beginnings in the land that they currently inhabit were not of nobility and riches. Similarly, Chileans were not born believing that Spanish was the most important language to come from God's hands. All this belief were how foreign settlers thought to own the nature and environment of the land that is known as Chile today. Therefore, it has become a necessity to keep an open mind and open heart to preserve the cultures and languages that have shaped the history of each country. That was our presentation. Thank you very much for your attention and we hope that it will be useful to you. So, thank you and see you next time.